Hey friends, welcome to this week's video. We are continuing in July with more earbuds and, you know, trying to stay under that 300 mark. And the last one that will be part of this sort of sub 300 comparison will be the Bowers & Wilkins PI5s. Again, there I know there's a PI7 and that'll be coming, but the following video to this will be a comparison between the last three earbuds I've done and this kind of closes out that comparison. Again, this is something that I've been really looking forward to. Byron Susan Wilkins has some of my favorite over-ear headphones, but I've never really tried their earbuds due to various reasons. I will say, not a big fan of the case so far, but, you know, we'll get further into it. So, instead of me belaboring the point, let's start looking at the specifications. The PI5s come in standard expected packaging, nothing special to boost the unboxing experience. It just doesn't follow the minimalistic or sustainable practices we're starting to see out of other manufacturers. The box comes with the earbuds, the case, manual, two extra ear tip sizes, and a charging cable. Accessories and add-ons are pretty light here, and it's really just focused around the earbuds themselves. Bowers & Wilkins has implemented a matte plastic design with some brushed silver accents for the touch controls and mics. It's a relatively sleek package and not a bad intro to what I believe is Bowers & Wilkins' first attempt at true wireless earbuds. Let's dive a bit deeper starting with the case. They mix it up with shiny and matte plastics, but I can't help but get PTSD from the Sony WF-1000XM3 case. It's just really boxy when compared to other products out there. This is a case, no pun intended, where I think companies need to look at competitors not only for what they do well, but what people hate about their products. Sony's case has been an eyesore for a while now, and they've just recently upgraded it. It's a little weird that Bowers & Wilkins decided to mimic their old design almost one for one. Anyway, design aside, this guy can be charged with USB-C or wirelessly and give you an additional 20 hours of playtime. However, this is far from impressive as the Jabra 85Ts achieved the same battery stats with a significantly smaller and sexier case and the Master and Dynamics crushes the PI5s with 30 hours in case. So b and is giving us a bigger case with middle of the road battery. Not ideal. Sliding over to the earbuds, they're simply beautiful and look a lot more premium than the competitors. However, they do come with less ear tips than rivals, which may or may not be an issue for you. I'm usually a medium to large ear tip, but on these ones I'm a small to medium depending on the activity level. In terms of touch controls, they are predetermined and cannot be changed, and for the most part are the same regardless of which side you tap. In terms of performance, they're for the most part reliable, but I did find some response lags at times. For calls, single tap will accept the call, and double tap will either end or reject the call. For music, they leverage single, double, and triple taps to control playback, and each earbud has a hold feature which the left is toggling the A and C while the right is activating the voice assistant. There is a noticeable emission of volume controls here and I find that to be annoying, especially because I really use those onboard controls for workouts. And as you will see later, in cases I get wrecked by rain or weather. <laughs> I'd rather not have to whip up my phone, but it's whatever, we endure. The app itself is just very barren. It just gives us the ability to control A and C, manage our multi-point connections and do soundscapes, which essentially is just random noises to relax. But in terms of leveling off your ANC or providing gesture control, the app is pretty barren and there's not much help for the users here. Battery rise, they're rated at 4.5 hours and I found that to be pretty true on average. They have a dynamic master and slave setup where the first earbud that you put in will be the master and the other will be the slave. I found that this causes the master to drain battery 30 minutes faster than the slave, but this setup also allows you to charge one earbud in the case while one ear in your music with the other. From a fit perspective, these do stick out a bit due to the design of the touch controls. However, they feel extremely comfortable and close to the head. While they take about the same footprint as the Sony WF-1000 XM4s, they feel smaller due to the shape. The main body sits nicely in the ear and doesn't feel like it's sticking out like the Sony's can. 
putting these in my ear, I was extremely impressed at how snug and secure they felt. They just felt a little bit more balanced than the other earbuds I've tried. However, I will say that I felt some ear fatigue as I got close to draining these batteries to dead, but nothing insane, just a slight relief from the outer ear upon removing them. However, that slight fatigue was not something I felt after I charged these buds back up and headed to the field. By far, these were the best feeling in ear when I was working out. I had no fear of these falling out, and I never had to adjust these once during the entire session, regardless of pace, change of direction, or sweat. I was pleased that I could jump without having to think about these earbuds outside the fact that I couldn't adjust the volume on the fly. <laughs> please fix. Please fix. But seriously, these earbuds were a beast for working out. The balanced design made them sit well in my ears throughout movement, and I noticed the least amount of stethoscope effects from heavy steps or jumps. I felt extremely locked into my workout and not tethered to technology, which was a strange feeling. It just kind of felt like I had my own anime OST running in my world. It was dope and it helped me focus more. I loved it. Before the headphones died, I did want to test the distance performance. The Bluetooth range is rated at 40 meters or 131 feet. I've seen reviewers crap on this part, but when I was running around the field, I didn't really have any issues with connectivity despite the distance I was at. I noticed slight signal interruptions around 40 yards and then significant degradation around 50 yards. I can't say how this stacks up to the industry yet, but with my crappy experiences with the MW08s what they broke out at 10 yards, this is by far fine. However, I did have one close proximity area where connections seemed to break down and it was ironically when I was just laying down flat. So when I was stretching my calves and I was stretching my quads, I did notice that I would get some breakups and some staticky noises coming through the headphone. It was really weird because the source was super close to me, but otherwise there were no connection issues, but for some reason when I was low to the ground, it was harder to pick up that signal. Just something to note. Moving on to sound modes, I found that ANC was pretty impressive for mid to low frequencies like car rumbles, TV noises, and AC units. However, high pitch sounds or like high frequency sounds like screeching brakes from trains or whistles from sports found their way into my headphones in a noticeable way. While there's no dynamic modes or leveling like in other earbuds or even like the Big Brother PI7s, they're still beyond serviceable and surpassed many competitors, especially on the lows. While they did scale back ANC features on the PI5, it doesn't affect the overall ANC experience from what I can hear. More on that with the PI7 review. The ambient sound mode has two levels, less and more. The former to hear conversations in a coffee shop, while the latter is more for social awareness on the street. I will say that this is one of the top ambient modes I've heard on earbuds. Things come in extremely clear and natural. Nothing sounded processed or boosted, and I felt like I was accurately hearing tones and volumes. It was very natural when talking with the ambient mode on, and I didn't feel awkward or like I was extending my voice too much when I was talking to waitresses and baristas. As far as wind, I don't think that they have wind protection features built in, as I did notice wind coming in. However, it's not the normal processed pain that you'd normally hear, aka it doesn't sound like someone is deep throating a microphone in your ear. It sounds more akin to wind just blowing past your ears like if you didn't have earbuds on. Again, super natural. While I didn't like the fact that it made its way in in the first place, I wasn't overly offended by it. So now let's get the awkward ears microphone so you guys can hear how these modes sound to your ears.
All right, so I'm sure you're wondering about how sound performance is, and I can tell you that I was super impressed out of the gate with these. And I think that no matter what you guys listen to in terms of genres, you'll be plenty pleased with it as well. Stock tune is pretty solid and it has a very versatile nature, which is good because you have no option to EQ this in their app. Yet another manufacturer who is not unlocking the full potential of their earbuds because they have a very minimalistic app with features that would be important, like an EQ. Anyway, you'll notice that there aren't ton of codecs available on the PI5s either, but I would have liked to see other Aptex codecs to allow for better data transfers for higher quality files. But I suppose that's the reason why they're doing that to differentiate it from the PI7. Regardless of these self-imposed limits, the headphones sound solid. They have great distinction in instruments and voices, but overall I think the signature could use a boost in certain areas. High shine really, really nicely, and the voices sound great whether you're listening to rap or singing. It's really dope with anime OSTs, not gonna lie. In the mid-range, people sounded clear but overall a bit recessed, and I missed some of the impact on certain voices. Lows were relatively clean, but I did notice some wobble and loss of control in certain areas. An example of this was J. Cole's Pride is the Devil. It really just depends on the song, I suppose. I felt that the bass was taking a slight backseat in certain songs, and in other songs I felt like it was out punching vocals. It's hard to put my finger on it, but overall I like how things sound. It just seems a little bit less refined in the lows than the Sony's. These wouldn't be my first choice to pick up for anything with complex or nuanced lows. They're just missing impact and control there. It seems that Dowers and Wilkins took a more balanced and reserved approach to their tuning to stay versatile, but it could use some dial-ups in certain areas like the mids and lows, and obviously, adding an EQ to their freaking app would solve that. But until they do, just listen to the stock tuning and I'll put some samples on and you guys can tell me what you think in the comments. All right, so I'm returning packages and doing a bunch of stuff and errands, but it's also pouring down rain in Boston due to this thunderstorm. So I figured it would be a good idea to also record some audio while I'm at it, just to give you guys an understanding of how your microphones sound here and if you're walking around the city or your town with normal conditions and if people would be able to hear you. Um, at this point, I don't know how this sounds, but you guys can tell me in the comments but there's a lot of going on around me. So you can uh, tell me how well I'm coming through. If I'm coming through clear, this sounds better than the other microphones that you've heard in my reviews. But yeah, definitely a lot to hear here. And hopefully I'm coming through well enough that you guys can get a gauge to see if this is good for you in your everyday. So, I'm back from my waterlogged adventure, but a little bit more dry now, so I think I can give you guys some insights on how this sounds indoors without a lot of distraction. But before we get there, I do want to make sure that we talk about that outdoor track, just because I think that that came in th super clear, like almost crystal clear. It's one of the better microphones I've heard, and there was a lot of stuff going on, and it was still able to reproduce my voice in a natural way with great clarity. So big ups on that. I think the only thing that you probably saw there is towards the end of that track, wind started to pick up, and that's when there's a little bit of degradation in sound, and I started cutting out a bit. Again, it doesn't have the wind protection of the W0, or sorry, the MW08s, uh, but they still bring in noise kind of naturally in, in general, and I think I mentioned that 
earlier in the review, is that the sound does come in, but it doesn't, like, offend your ear. But, again, it doesn't have the protection of some of the other headphones, so that's just something to keep in mind. But as we move indoors, the clarity, you know, persists, obviously. Uh, but when I was talking with clients and with coworkers, they were saying that I was sounding the clearest that I have in the whole, in the whole all month. So they definitely notice a difference when speaking. Obviously, on my side, things came out pretty crystal clear as well. But uh, I think this is a really good representation of how these microphones work. Again, these have less microphones than the PI7s, but still perform admirably. Uh, the only thing that really comes down to in terms of you wanting to use this for your conferencing would be probably the battery life. Um, so they do rate them at, you know, four and a half hours. I was getting a little bit under that. Um, so it's a little bit optimistic there, but overall, if you don't do long calls, it should run, uh, run fine with you. But like when I was c coming from the Sony's, which, you know, last eight hours, six hours with calls and things like that, obviously it's just a little bit less hassle, but if you're not on calls a ton, then you should be okay. It's just, you need to understand if that meets your need or not. But in terms of audio performance from the microphones, I think you'll be extremely satisfied with how you sound and so will your audience. But anyway, I hope that helps you guys guide your understanding of how these mics perform. Let's get into my final recommendation. So the PS7s are an interesting package. They are very, very comfortable. They have a pretty solid sound signature, and I think that a lot of people will still like them, regardless of their quirks. However, this is a case of, do I want to buy something in hopes that it gets better? And my suggestion is you don't do that. Generally, you should buy things that are good and meet all of your needs out of the gate. So then when things do get better, it's just an add on to that. This is one of those cases where there are a few things that I like about it, but I'm really waiting for things to improve on the app, a little things to improve on the controls and things like that. Like really, really, really hoping that they update things on firmware. Um, and that's just something I don't believe that you guys should do. And especially at this price point at 250, it is a little bit pricier. Um, and to make those caveats just doesn't make sense to me. You could easily go and get the Jabra 85Ts, which will give you better controls in both the apps and the onboard controls um, and give you pretty decent sound that's similar to this, as well as the, I forgot the name of it, but it's Sennheiser CX something. Those have been really, really highly rated. I got to sample those very, very shortly from a friend, but those sound probably just as good as these. Again, they're not very feature heavy, but neither are these. Um, so there's, there's other options out there at this price range that you can look at. Again, the Sonys are even good for, for what uh, we're talking about here, but we'll get more into that in the future review. But I think that it's, it's kind of just in that stuck in the middle phase. Like I went into these headphones really hoping that I'd be using them because one, they look sexy as hell. But when I was when I did that field workout, I was like convinced I was gonna keep them. I was like, these things feel amazing in ear. I was really tuned into my music. But then when I started comparing them more side to side by stuff, I started tapering back just because it started being very, very apparent that Bowers and Wilkins on purpose handicapped these guys so the PI7s could truly shine. So holding back on the codex, holding back on some of the controls in the apps. Like you, do, you wouldn't even expect the app to be drastically different between the two earbuds, but they are. So that's something that we'll talk about in a future review. But yeah, they just on purpose chopped this guy at the knees so it can't perform as well as it should. Um, but still commendable, definitely if this is something that fits your aesthetic and you're good with the sound signature that you can pick up, I don't think you'll be any, you won't be upset, but there are definitely options out there that have better battery life, similar features, similar sound signature, maybe at a cheaper price that may make you happy. So at that point, that's what I would recommend. I would say, you know, wait around, see what you, and do some research and see what's in the market. Um, there's definitely a lot, but these probably wouldn't be your guys unless you're really just in love with the aesthetic fit and sound. But definitely try them out, see what you think. Let me know what uh, you think if you do pick these up. Uh, but yeah, that's my recommendation. I think it's pretty clear. But there's going to be more comparisons head to head with these headphones because I want to make sure that you guys can do that comparison without me. Um, or without swapping between my various videos and you can actually do it side by side. So I'll be going over like the ANC features, sound quality, controls, app, all that sort of stuff. I'm just gonna have to figure out the perfect, I guess, foundation set to start out with because obviously like the Sony's are superior in terms of the app and ANC options. 
but uh, I'm gonna have to just figure out what's a good like level playing ground so that they all can compete and we can do this more fairly. But yeah, I appreciate that you guys have been engaging and liking these headphone videos. Obviously, it's really popular in general on YouTube, but uh, I am going to be continuing that journey with the comparison and the PI7s in the month of July, so stay tuned for that. I have been really happy that you guys have showed me that you liked everything by commenting more, you know, contacting me via social media or even subscribing. So if you're new here, please consider liking, commenting, subscribing, doing all the things that you normally do on a video that you like and love. And if you're you know, a new subscriber or if you're old, please continue giving me ideas on how I can improve the videos and, you know, helping me get to what we're trying to do in terms of that thousand. We're super close. I think the last time I checked it, we were at like eight, 50, 856 or something like that. Um, so we're getting closer and everything's accelerating by the day. So it's really cool to see that engagement and that you guys are liking the videos. So I'm, you know, I'm trying to keep consistent with the shorts, uh, the videos and all that sort of stuff. So make sure that you're subscribed so you can see all of those things pop up on your feed. Um, but yeah, anyway, appreciate you guys as always. Thank you. Peace.